Welcome to the Fade Route this will be the best show tonight. with DNZ. Here are your hosts. DNZ. Welcome to this week's episode of The Fade Route with DNZ. I am D, and we've got a great show for you tonight. Frank Wright loses his job. TCU rounds out the top four in college football, and the Jets take out the Bills. But we begin today's show with the World Series. The Astros beat the Phillies four games to two over the weekend. The Astros were the class of the American League all year. I've been saying it. He's been saying it. Now they've been in contention for about five, six years now. With this second title, Z, would you consider the Astros a dynasty? Well, I mean, you definitely need to consider it. Just from the simple fact that, yes, they got over that hump. They got that second one. And they're now 2-2 two and two in their last four World Series. So, in recent vintage, this Astros team, since 2017, even though that is, you know, clouded in scandal and very much deservedly so, but you have to take into account how good this team is, you know? Yes, they were... You know, they were the class of the American League. Cleve- uh, Cleveland. Philadelphia gave them a little bit of a run in the World Series. You know, they, they put a scare into them. They certainly did more than you and I thought they would do against the Astros in this series. And it boils down to one move. You know, this one move in the pivotal... Game six. Wheeler seems to be cruising along, and Rob Thompson decides to go to Jose Alvarado, and the rest, as they say, is history. But is it something like the late 90s Yankees, just for the amount of titles? No. Is this going to be the heyday of baseball in New York? No. With the Yankees you know, dominating the 50s and into the early 60s. No, it's not going to be it. But are they above a franchise like the Braves? Right? With all those division titles in one World Series? I would say yes. This World Series put them above that kind of that group right not a full not a full dynasty yet but they are separating themselves from also rants yeah I mean for me I, I guess I'd agree with you I'm, I'm, I'm not thinking they're a dynasty I mean it's definitely impressive what they've done I also think their record in these World Series games is something like 13 and 13. They're about 500. Um, you know, you, you, I mean, I guess if you want to call them an American League dynasty, I mean, because what they've they've won the league four out of six times, right? They've mm-hmm. gotten there. Um, you know, they only got two titles. Um, I guess I could say they're in the Braves camp. Only the I, the Braves did it for a lot longer, right? The Braves had like a 14 or 15 year kind of run. Um, so they, they're definitely impressive. Um, they've made all the right moves. They pushed all the right buttons. How about Jeremy Pena winning the MVP <laughs> after they let go of Correa? I mean, how often yeah, Correa must be 
my train is feel like dog shit right now. Really? Um, I, I really don't think so. I think he's going to be uh, crying. he be, you know, wiping his tears with $100 bills. I think, think he, so? I think Carlos Correa is fine. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so I think if they win next year, though, then we can talk about it. Then the discussion has to be made. They're the team of the decade or the team at least the last 10 years. They've got players. They got young players. And they just they got a good coach now. But you know, I feel like this was like not the redeemed team, but this was like the team that was kind of trying to prove, hey man, don't the cheating. Don't say that to this team. Because this team didn't cheat. You know what I mean? I feel like that was the attitude of this. Um, I feel like the team that lost, I think lost to the Dodgers. That was the right? No. Did they lose the would they they lost to the Dodgers, right? Yeah, they lost to the Dodgers. Yeah, so I think that was the team that was trying to prove everybody, like, oh, we're not cheaters. This was the, like, listen, this team didn't cheat. This team doesn't know about cheating. This team is trying to win a World Series. Now, the only thing with that ad is, is how do you stay hungry, right? Right. I don't, I don't know if these guys can stay hungry. Um, things are going to get a lot tougher. Um, they're not going to be able to keep everybody. I think their pitching staff's going to pretty much stay intact, though. And that's huge because their bullpen was just lights out. As for the Phillies are concerned, I'm just glad Philly didn't win the World Series. God, I'm glad they didn't win the World Series. How <laughs> awful would that have been? Philadelphia winning the World Series? Oh, man, gosh. Did you think of it? Never would have heard the end of it. Obnoxious fan base on the face of the planet. Um, you know, they didn't belong there. They got, they got no hit, which is embarrassing, I think, to be a no-hit in the World Series. I think they also got no-hit during the year, too. To Combined no-no no by the Mets. They so, got, yeah. yeah, so, I mean, the one thing I'd say about the Phillies, though, is they fought, man. They really did. They fought. They, they were never out. They were never down. They came back. You know, you really thought, I thought the World Series was over when the, the Astros jumped out to a five-run lead in the first game. They came back and won that game, and and they just got a lot of pop in their bat, and you know it's just it's the new era of baseball in regards to the playoffs, right? It's like we don't got to play 162 games. We lost our best player for the whole summer. We were still in it. Came in September, we got hot, and that's what baseball has become. And I don't believe baseball was like that 10, 15 years ago. It was like, ah, yeah. oh, we need to win every game. We need to have a 10-game lead in our division. We need cushion. We need to win games while we're healthy because we don't know what's going to happen when we're not. Now it's like, hey, man, we got to – the last six weeks of the season, we got to win 70 per, 70% of those games. And if we do that, we're in good shape. I really truly believe that's the new attitude of baseball. The more, most important thing is that you need to get through the season healthy. More so than anything else. Uh, it's one thing to just steamroll the competition, right? And you don't really see that a lot in baseball anymore because there's a lot more parity than in the late 90s and the early and mid 2000s. Baseball now is has become more about attrition than anything else. It's about survival. All you have to do is get in and get hot at the right time and you will benefit from it. So as far as the Astros go, you know, this team definitely is trying to distance itself from its past. Hinch is gone. Springer is gone. Correa is gone. A lot of the pitching staff, Keuchel is gone. Musgrove, Granky, Musgrove, Granky, oh, Cole, Garrett, Garrett Cole, that you know, guy, him. Uh, let's see who else. Jeff Lunau is gone. AJ Hinch is gone. The catcher left, right? Yeah, you know, uh, Beltron is gone. Alex Cora is gone. Like that was flushed. Like uh, th- all those guys are gone. So. You know, it stands to reason. It, it definitely stands to reason that this team was trying to shed that moniker, to shed that idea that they cheated. But it's very hard to not think about that since they've already been convicted of it in the past. Now, 
knowing Dusty Baker's rep, you know, reputation around Major League Baseball, I don't think he would jeopardize that. I, I don't think he would just to get into and win a World Series. I don't think he would make like a Faustian bargain like that. But, you know, it's one thing to do it. Now they have to do it again. And in order to really ascend to that next level. Avoid messy accidents. Get better stopping power with your brake pads. Callahan brake pads. You never know when you'll be driving in the road and there will be a truck tire that you need to avoid and save your family. Callahan Auto. We really care about what's under your hood. And speaking of ascending to the next level, we're moving over to football. There were a few upsets, but probably the most glaring upset was the J-E-T-S Jets, 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 toppling the division leading Buffalo Bills 20 to 17 at MetLife. The New York media is loving this roller coaster ride. They are really buying into the New York Jets and Coach Sala and Gardner and Mosley and this defense that they put together. They're, they're really starting to, to buy the Jets as a contender, a legit contender. Did this win say more about the Jets or more about the Bills for you? Yeah, to me, it said a lot to me about the Bills. Um, they lollygagged this game. I don't think they took the Jets seriously. I think they walked in there and thinking, hey, man, we're going to put up 40 on these guys. And that's just not going to happen. Um, you know, we've talked about this, what, for like two years now. If Josh Allen's your leading rusher, you got a problem. You got a problem. And uh, he was pedestrian on the day. I think he threw two interceptions, two ugly interceptions. Uh, he looked confused. He looked rattled. Um, they couldn't establish a running game. They were missing a couple of starters on defense. But the defense wasn't the story. Like, the Jets only scored 20 points. The story was the offense just being inept and not, not being able to figure out how to gain ground and how to score on the Jets. Um, you know, I'm not taking anything away from the Jets, but... They, they took advantage of they took advantage of the Bills. They beat them, but I mean Zach Wilson, 154 yards and a touchdown. It's just, that's not that's not winning the AFC Championship games, man. That's 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 win. You know what that is? That's that's winning a road game, right? That's winning a road game in your division. This is how this guy played at home. Um, we're gonna we're gonna find we're gonna find out who the Jets are because they've got some tough games coming up. They're going to New England. They're gonna go to Buffalo. They're going to Miami. They've got some tough games coming up, and we'll find out more about the Jets. What we're finding out more so about the Jets is that that defense plays, right? That defense is doing its job. Sauce Gardner is legit. DJ Reed is legit. Whitehead is legit. They have a secondary. C.J. Mosley's an anchor in the middle, and Quinton Williams is a run stuffer in, in the front. Hey, Franklin Myers sometimes makes stupid decisions, but they're solid and they're deep at defensive end. They're solid and deep on the defensive line. So that is something that is, you know, and I didn't even mention Quan Alexander. Like, you can go down a, down the line, like when. When Salah was running the show in San Francisco, Quan Alexander was one of the first people you mentioned. Now he's probably like the sixth or seventh guy that you mentioned. So that is something to be said about what they're building on the defensive side of the ball with the Jets. Offensively, Zach Wilson is Zach Wilson at this point. This is what he is, man. Like, yeah, yeah this is at 154 and a touchdown. Like, Oh, it was fine. It's not great. It's nothing to write home about, but what you do have, right? You have a pretty legit two-headed running game between Robinson and Carter. You have a combined 124 yards and a touchdown. You might have found something here with this Garrett Wilson. 
You might have done it. You might have done it. I'm just saying. Nine, t- nine targets, eight receptions for 92 yards. Solid. More than solid. Like, that's easily far and away their number one guy right now. When Corey Davis gets back, I don't know if he's the number one. Like, they have something going. Wilson to Wilson is producing right now. And you have to kind of ride that out and see what that is. But if you take Garrett Wilson out of it, right? Take his production out of it. That's not good. But Zach Wilson's numbers are (laughs) just... That's not good. 154 minus 92. Like I, uh, you know, I may, I may teach math for a living, but it's just like that's that's not good. Yeah, that's just not good at all. I mean, this was a game. This was a game they needed, right? They had to win uh-huh. this game because they go into the bye. When they come, now they got two weeks to prepare for the Patriots. They're going to Foxborough. Yes. All right. So, and then the Bears, the Bears aren't a rollover anymore. Um, they've got a they've got a, a quarterback now that seems to be playing well. So then, the Chicago Bears come to New York. But then you go to Minnesota to play a team that's only got one loss right now. Then you're going to get a revenge game. You're going to Buffalo in December. Mm-hmm. So, you know, that's what I'm saying. You're going to find out. I mean, can Zach Wilson throw the ball in High- Highland Park, wherever the, that place is called these days? You know, Lions, Lions. I mean, we're finding out about other teams in the division. Like, we were jumping, you know, the New York media was jumping through hoops. Oh, they went into Green Bay, and, and they beat Aaron Rodgers and the Packers 27-10. Well, guess what? The Packers suck. <laughs> like, the Packers lost to the Lions. They only scored nine points against the worst defensive team in the league. Okay? So, that's who the Lions are. I mean, to me, the, the marquee win for their season really was just against the Browns and they barely won that game you know I mean who 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 are you hanging your hat on like who are you puffing your chest about you know you beat the you beat a division opponent at home you're supposed to you know but you're supposed to win convincingly you won by three Patriots beat you by five now you're gonna have to go and play in those places again if the Jets have an AD, you should be fired. They played all their all their division games in the early part of the season. They're on the road for the rest of this, the rest of the season against the division opponents. That sucks. So we'll find out. We'll find out. Um, but one thing we're not going to find anything else about is about the Colts this season. Mm. <laughs> Colts and Sam Ellinger lost to the New England Patriots on Sunday, 26 to three in Foxborough. The Colts had 103 yards passing in this beatdown. And on Monday, Jim Irsay fired Frank Reich, hired former player Jeff Saturday with no coaching experience as the interim coach. Is Jim Irsay serious about winning in Indy, or is he tanking for one of these stud quarterbacks that's about to come out of the draft? That would be the sixth quarterback in six years, starting week one. Like, that is ridiculous. This is, I don't know what's going on. I, I really don't know what is going on in Indy. This used to be a stable franchise prior to them cutting Peyton Manning because he became Frankenstein's monster. <laughs> ever since then, and ever since Andrew Luck left this team because he could see the writing on the wall. And he could see that they are going to kill me because we do not have an offensive line. It's been one guy after another after another. If it's not Jacoby Brissett, it's Philip Rivers. If it's not Philip Rivers, it's Matt Ryan. If it's not Matt Ryan, it's not it's Carson Wentz. Now you're on to Sam Ellinger. Who's not ready for prime time? But think about it, dude. That that whole scenario fell in his lap, right? You know, Peyton Manning fell in his lap. Bill Polian, he just happened to have him hired. It's not like this guy is a master craft at putting together an organization. He stepped in shit. No, he inherited it from his dad. He inherited it from his dad, and he hasn't he hasn't had anything to do with the success of this team other than staying out of the way when they were doing good. Yeah. Um, you know, to me, to me, I think I think the NFL needs to open up an investigation. 
I think he's tanking. And that's just... You can't come out and talk shit about Dan Snyder and then pull a move like this where you hire Jeff Saturday. And we talked about this on the show a couple weeks ago, right? It said, benching Matt Ryan... Why would you bench Matt Ryan? There's no way Frank Reich walked into the room and said, Ah, oh, Matt, you're not going to play for the rest of the season. That's not coming from Frank Reich, man. That's coming from Garrison. And he's not stupid because he's thinking to himself, Well, you know, Jonathan Taylor's hurt. We're pretty bad. Last time I got a top pick, I got Peyton Manning. And that's what we haven't had. But, I mean, what a slap in the face to the players and the coaches that are on this team with years of experience in coaching. Let me let me, let me, me just some, say some of the names here. You got Gus Bradley, mm-hmm. former head coach of the Jaguars, coach defense for the Legion of Boom, coach defense in for the Chargers. You got Bubba Ventrone, who's been in the league for, he's been a coach for eight years and he played in the league. Another guy you got is you got John Fox is a senior defensive assistant, mm. 40 years of coaching experience. Now, we're going to pass on you, John. We'll see what you can do. Uh, who else? We got Kevin Mawai. Kevin Mawai is probably one of the best offensive line coaches in the league. Now, we're going to go with Jeff Saturday. He's so much better. Oh, wait. There's another guy here. Hold on. There's one more guy. Mike Mitchell. Mike Mitchell, I would think, would be a good coach. I think he knows his stuff. And Reggie Wayne is the wide receivers coach. You're telling me you passed on all those guys for Jeff Saturday? Guys never blowing a whistle? How does that look? I think it looks like shit. I think you really... I think they're going to get blown out this weekend by the Raiders. Because you just... You bring in... He's a rah-rah guy, right? Jeff Saturday is going to be a rah-rah guy. He's going to walk in. He's going to inspire people. He doesn't know what to do if they come up with an eight-man front against Ellinger. He ain't going to know what to do. He's not going to know what play to call. He's not going to know how to get out of this situation. You know? And he's also entrusting that in 30-year-old Parks Frazier. True or false, Peyton Manning was the first phone call Jim Irsay made. I gotta say true. Right. I have I to think figure. So too. I have to figure that Irsay called him not to gauge, not not to gauge his interest in coaching because I really don't think Peyton Manning wants to coach. Because like all great players, they know they suck as coaches because. They're never going to coach somebody as talented as they were, right? That's why Wayne Gretzky was a terrible head coach. That's why Ted Williams was a terrible manager. That's why Hank Aaron never even tried. He there's that there's that one story about him in spring training where he took a bat, flicked his wrist three times, and hit the ball the opposite way. Turned to the to the hitter and said, "Now why can't you do that?" <laughs> Because they're not you, Hank. Damn it. Like, that's how it works. You know, the, they were blessed with talent. They nurtured that talent. They're never going to get somebody as talented as them. I would argue if you are going to tank, that you're tanking a year too early. Because there's another Manning that's going to be available. you got to be aching for Arch. Like, that's what you need to be doing. Because... Yeah, you can get C.J. Stroud. You can get, you know, you can get some other quarterbacks coming out this year. But he, that kid's a stud. And you already have the connection with the organization. The other you thought think- the other thought I had is that he called Peyton. And Peyton's like, listen, I don't want to coach. But I do want to be a GM. Mm-hmm. And you know what? I, I Why don't you give Jeff Saturday a call and let him be the head coach? And I'll think about being the GM next year. That's the other thing I thought might have happened. You know? Yeah. But there, just, there's quite a bit of backlash right now because of that, especially if they're working these backroom deals, they really need to be careful about this because they are skirting around the Rooney rule. Now, with the, with the Jeff Saturday issue, the Rooney rule does not apply to interim coaches. Like, that has been... That has been explicitly stated. However, the moment that the season ends, Ursay needs to abide by the Rooney rule in his hiring process, or else there will definitely be an investigation into him. But this it definitely feels like shady backroom dealings on his behalf, on his part. And, you know, I, I really don't know. And this is no knock on Jeff Saturday. You know, 
Like, people have been coming out, you know, slamming Jeff Saturday for taking this job. If you were offered a head coaching position in the NFL, if I was offered a coaching position in the NFL, we would take it in a fucking heartbeat. Yeah, I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't really know about that. You'd really take any whole head coaching job in the NFL? There's only 32 of them. (laughs) There's only 32 of them. The Raiders call you tomorrow. You're like, yeah, get send me the next fight. I'll go to Vegas. Get the I fuck can't out do. Of here. I can't do worse than McDaniel's. I'm not. <laughs> I can't do worse than McDaniel's. <laughs> call, hey, Mark, call me. Fuck them picks. Fuck them picks. Now, clearly, no. look at it. Look at their draft records. They Listen, fucked them already. I don't know, man. I don't know if I'm just packing my bag and going anywhere. Chicago, Chicago is your call. You're going over there. You're going to Chicago. They, they have Justin Fields. They have the cupboards not bare. It's not like you're going into a situation like you're going into with Indianapolis, where they don't have a quarterback. They have a stud running back who's hurt. You know, you you have Shaq Leonard. This was my fucking Super Bowl pick, man. You go out and hire Jeff Saturday. You no, know, but but that's it. and even at the press conference, he he relayed the story. Ursa called him. He's like, "You sure about this? Is that you, Tolbert?" <laughs> so like, even what happened, he, man? Even Where he did, recognizes where, that it's a little far fetched. Where did it all go wrong? I thought I had this I had this team begged for wins. I thought they were going places up the third grade. Where did they go wrong? Where did they go uh, wrong? Where do you want me to start? Okay, um, getting Carson Wentz, no, uh, Philip Rivers, uh, Matt Ryan, any of those guys, wow. any of them, any of them, not begging Andrew Luck to stay, or not even going and get Russell Wilson, like getting somebody who will give you stability at the position. Carson Wentz is who he was. I told you that was going to be the case. You brought in 40-year-old Philip Rivers. Like, that was a band-aid. Matt Ryan's, what, 37? But then why not, dra- but why not draft a quarterback then? You, you, why not draft a quarterback? How did you not draft a quarterback? If, if, if Why didn't you trade up to get one of these guys? Well, if you look at their talent evaluation, they probably don't, they didn't value these guys as yeah. as much as we do. And on top of that, like you give them credit. They went and got Jonathan Taylor. They were able to, you know, they were able to get some guys. They had T.Y. Hilton for years. They, there was some there were some positions that they were able to draft well at. And there are others that they just did not do well. And quarterback is clearly one of them. And they finally, you know, they finally had a decent offensive line. And the best quarterback refused to play behind them. He, he said, I would rather go home and play with my family. I'd rather die. <laughs> I, I, would, I would rather end my career and, and go be an advocate and be a booster for Stanford than do this. I'd rather play Connect Four at home with a seven-year-old than quarterback this team. <laughs> what does that tell you? They, they, you know, I'm sure that there were plenty of back channel, there was plenty of back channel communication trying to get Andrew Luck out of retirement. I mean, you can bank on that. And for him to stay gone, that's very telling. Their offensive line was just so solid, and I really thought their defense played well last year. Like, they played well last year. They they gassed it down the stretch. They lost that game to Jacksonville, and they just never recovered. They lost that game to Jacksonville at the end of the year last year. They literally never got off the mat. And they have talent at every single position. They have arguably one of the best offensive lines. They're just, just not getting it done. Do you love brownies? Of course you love brownies. But you know what's better than a brownie? A delicious, handcrafted, gourmet brownie delivered right to your doorstep. That's what our guys at Sweet Life Brownie Co. offer. Chef Tommy D and the crew offer a dozen delicious delights that you will crave. From the classic OB to Dutch Apple to Campfire S'mores and many more. Check out their website, SweetLifeBrownieCo.com, for their Friday brownie drops. At noon, their site goes live, and you see what they're making. Since you're there, become a site member and earn points. You earn 50 points just by signing up. Make sure you follow them on Instagram and Facebook, too, at SweetLifeBrownie underscore co for the latest updates and their latest releases and creations. That's SweetLifeBrownieCo.com. 
Give him a call, 845-641-3043, and tell him DNZ sent you. That's sweetlifebrownieco.com, 845-641-3043. Sweet Life Brownie Co., because there's always room for a brownie. You know, time to talk some college football, your favorite topic. Hmm. Georgia, Ohio State, Michigan, TCU, round out the top four. Missing is Alabama, (laughs) Tennessee, Oregon. So, any issues with the rankings this early in November? The teams that are on the outside looking in are deservedly so. They lost. Plain it's and so, simple. It's so crazy that they demand perfection in this game, right? It's remember the Titans. <laughs> you will be perfect in every aspect of it. So, you know, it is what it is. Like, you want the best four teams standing. And you know what? You can't do better than undefeated team. Kirby Smart has his guys playing. Harbaugh has his guys playing. TCU, like, come on now. Like, it, it's very... It's a good story. It is a good story. And it's not like they haven't beaten ranked opponents, right? They no. beat Oklahoma. They beat Kansas. They beat Oklahoma State. Kansas State. They Texas. beat everybody they, you put they're, in front they're, of. Yeah, they're going to draw Texas. They're they, going to, you know. Their AD did a great job putting their thing together. Yeah. The problem so, I have, the problem I have is I don't want to see the SEC play the Big Ten, man. And that's what we're, that's what it's shaping up for. It's shaping up for me seeing Georgia destroy either Michigan or Ohio State. I'm just not interested. I'm not interested. I seen it. I'm good. I'm good. The SEC is superb. Is more powerful than the Big Ten. We get it. But I don't think we're gonna have to worry about that, right? Because if everything stays the way it is, Ohio State's probably gonna play Michigan. Right in the Big Ten Championship, right? Yeah. yeah. So one of them is going to lose, and that leaves the door open for a Tennessee. I want to see Tennessee again. I like their quarterback. Oregon, I give Oregon the benefit of the doubt. I don't believe in them, but they're, the only loss they have was, I think, the first game of the season. That's tough, man. You know, you don't know what you're going to get. And if I'm not mistaken, they played the game on a neutral site, too. Um... Yeah, I'm not interested in LSU. Alabama, gosh. What the hell happened to that team? I mean, they're just... This might be the worst coaching job Nick Saban done in the last 10 years. Well, how much of this is also related to name, image, and likeness rights? They can't buy everybody because other teams are competing with them. You know, I don't know. I don't know because I think Alabama is pretty powerful. I do think they have capital. I do think they have alumni. And I think they were buying players before this rule got in, right? He's yeah. always had the best player. He's always had the best athletes, let alone best players. Nick Saban's always had the best athletes. I mean, if you look at the guys who've gone in the first round, I mean, I think five of his running backs are starting in the league right now. Like, so I think he's still, that's why I, I think he's still getting the best players. So I'm putting this really on him. I mean, his quarterback is one of the best quarterbacks in the country. So, you know, and that and that's always been my knock on Nick Saban. Is Nick Saban's always been able to get the best talent, so win every fucking year. He doesn't. Mm-hmm. He doesn't. And this this to me is probably his worst coaching job he's done. And Clemson getting blown out by Notre Dame, so they're done. Nobody's gonna be wanting to see them. It's it's. You know, I I'm curious to see who sneaks up the ladder. I think I think people want to see USC. I think. I know it sounds awkward, but... That sounds like a friggin' waste of time if I ever heard one. It is, but people want to see it. You know? <laughs> you want to see it. You want to see it. But I, the one thing I don't want to see is I do not want to see the Big Ten in the championship game. I do not want to see that. Give me an SEC school or give me something else. You know, something different. I'm tired of watching the Big Ten get beat. Well, I mean, if we're going to look at this... You know, Ohio State, they're not going to play anybody of note until they play Michigan. Right. Like, so, you know, which they should win single. They should win that game. 
that game. I don't they should. Well, it's number two versus number three. So it's like, that. that's going to be big time. That's actually going to be a, a big time kind of scenario. Yeah, and- but is Michigan really number three? Like, who the hell is they? Right? Like who, who, who's, Mich- who's Michigan hanging their hat on? Like, I oh, mean, yeah, you know who we be? Penn State. Like that's really the yeah, only well, one State's that you. Penn State's trash. Were... Penn State's trash. They play like a soft schedule. I mean, look at this. They're playing Hawaii, Colorado State. At the time, Penn State was ranked number ten in the country. So at yeah. the time, now we know yeah. that Penn State is a now. paper tiger. Now yeah. you know that Penn State is a paper <laughs> tiger. But <laughs> you know, this is gonna be it. Like Michigan and Ohio State. One of them has to lose, but that loss is going to be better than any other loss that you have out there, right? Because we're have... pretty, because we're pretty much assuming that they're going to beat Nebraska and they're going to beat Illinois. Illinois might be a tough game for them, but they should, they should beat Illinois. Yeah, but if you look at, if you really look at it, right? I mean, the only like Tennessee is going to draw Mizzou, South Carolina, Bear, Vanderbilt. Okay, so they they may sneak in if Tennessee, you know, if wins they win out, they might be able to get back in there. But they may take the committee may take the one loss Michigan or the one loss Ohio State, even though they lost because of the fact that it was number two in the country versus number three in the country at that time. You can't really you can't really say you know like okay you know you have to take into account the week that they are the, the week of the ranking. You can't just be like, oh, whatever. Because, you know, if you look back at Oregon, Oregon lost to number three at the time, Georgia. They got their doors blown off, 49-3. to three, And that's going to taint them for the rest of the year. So they, they may sneak in. Depend, it, it all depends. If TCU is the one that you're going to look at, right? Just like Cincinnati or Coastal Carolina or any school that's not a major power. Coastal Carolina. Like UCF, any team that has a legitimate claim that's going to be outside of these big name conferences and big name schools, the the groundswell of support is going to be behind them to be in the playoffs. However, if TCU loses, then they'll be gone in a heartbeat. Now, they have Texas, they have Baylor, and they have Ohio, and Iowa, Iowa State. So it's possible, right? I mean, Texas, they, they could lose to Texas this weekend. I don't, I don't see why they couldn't. It, it's within the realm of possibility. Like, Baylor isn't that far removed from being a powerhouse. Iowa State's Iowa State. But, you know, it's possible that they become, that they're a two lost team. What do you do then if you're the committee? You start revisiting guys like Tennessee. You start revisiting a team like Oregon. And if you're down to like two lost teams, LSU and Alabama come back around. Because then you have to start looking at Pac-12 schools. And Pac-12 is just meh. It's just not good. Just sorry. I I don't believe in Lincoln Riley. He didn't do anything in Oklahoma. I don't think he's going to do anything at USC. This guy is just waiting for something to open up in the NFL. I'm assuming Arizona. I'm assuming he's going to replace Cliff Kingsbury at the end of the year. But, I mean, we will see what happens there. But this is just the beginning. Can you take the championship from DNZ? This year, you can play our football pick'em on CBS Sports and compete against us in the option every week. Check the link in our Instagram bio, Fade Brown Podcast, for all the details and to sign up. Then tune into the Fade Brown every week until the Super Bowl for updates and standing. Bring it on. And speaking of just the beginning of it, we're 12 games into the NBA season right now. And of all teams, it's being first place in the West, the Utah Jazz who seem to be blowing it up, right? Danny Ainge is like, oh, you want Gobert? No problem. You want Donovan Mitchell? Sure. We'll pack their bags for them. And now they are nine and three. They are nine and three. And in the East, you have the Bucks. The Bucks 
who have only lost one game this year, right? They're nine and one. Which team can sustain this position longer? Yeah, uh, I got to go with the Bucks. I got to think that they're for real. They're going for another title. Uh, Giannis looks in midseason form. Uh, the only thing is East is treacherous. I mean, I truly believe in this Cavaliers team. Celtics defending Eastern Conference champions. Hawks are legit. And then, if, and then you got to imagine the Sixers get their ish together at some point and raise up, raise through, right? In the West, I mean, it's weird right now. I mean, you got you got teams that you think would be in the top half on the bottom, right? The Warriors, the Warriors are four and seven. Man. Mm-hmm. Timberwolves, I thought they were going to be. Dynamite. They're five and six. Lakers only have two wins. They're looking like they're gonna have their worst season ever. Clippers. Clippers are in the seventh spot. You know, so I think that I I can't believe it, but but give credit to Danny Ainge. He knows what he's doing. He knows how to put together a team. Like imagine if they're a year early or two years early, and here we thought he was rebuilding. Man, watch out. <laughs> It's tough to say that the Bucks are going to be sustainable when you look over their roster because it's still very much the same friggin' roster, right? You still they have, have, a, the they same... have a lot of talent, though, man. They got talent. Like, yeah. Colin Sexton's talent. Lori Marketing's talent. Jordan Clarkson's talent. Kelly Olynyk is talent. Michael Conley's veteran. Yeah, on the Jazz, yes. But the Bucks, you oh. still have the same old question. Like, who's after Middleton? Oh, Batman and Robin. It's the Batman yeah. and Robin theory. Yeah, but you know what? Like, I, I need some help. <laughs> but I, I, I need Commissioner Gordon. I need Chief O'Hara. I need some help. Because, yeah, you need back. Who's Batgirl on this? Like, who, who's it going to be? Thanasis? Like, Thanasis was wiping boogers out of Giannis' nose opening night. Like, that that's his role on this team. He's a professional booger wiper. I mean, what, Drew Holiday? Like, Drew Holiday, I, he's all right. Like, he's, he's nothing special. Connaughton? Like, you know, Connaughton's a bench player, you know? Brooke Lopez? You're really still hanging your hat on 34-year-old Brooke Lopez? You know? Wes Matthews? Eh? Ben, a bench player, rotation player. Bobby Portis, rotation player. Like, you may be playing very well, you know, in, as you know, a group, you may be very, you know, very suited together as a unit. However, you know, the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. This is, this is not a team that scares me. The Jazz, you know, credit to Danny Ainge, like you said, like this team is deep. You have Beasley, Clarkson, Rudy Gay, Lori Markkinen, if if Markkinen ever gets his shit together, like this would be the the time to do it. Sexton, like they got so much back for Donovan Mitchell, they got a lot back for Donovan Mitchell, and they did a hell of a job. Danny Ainge did a hell of a job. He sold high, and he got a better package than the New York Knicks ever would have given him. Let's be real here. They he took the heart. He took the heart of the Cleveland Cavaliers and he made it his own. Then you add a guy like John Juzang, you add in Walker Kessler, you guys that shined in the NCAA tournament. So guys that we know and guys that have played on a big stage before. And you you even have Kelly Olenek. Like Kelly, Kelly Olenek has a role in this league, right? He's a glue guy. He's a heart and soul guy. He's going to fight for the rebounds. He's going to be a defensive stopper. That's what Kelly Olenek does. You know, he's an effort guy because he's not talented enough. So he's got to be able to differentiate himself with that. The West is crazy right now. So it's possible that the staying power actually could be in Utah because we also know that Danny Ainge isn't afraid to make a big move. 
he already made two, right? So who is to say that there isn't anybody out there come deadline time? And if they're in the hunt, if they're in the hunt, why not bring in a star player? Why not bring in a guy that can help this team and take them to the next level? The level that Rudy Gobert and Donovan Mitchell couldn't get them to. You know, the, it's being run very well and it, they're in good hands. Milwaukee just seems like they threw this team in the microwave. <laughs> it's like, we're going to get it again. Like, we're just going to go get it again with the same guys. And, you know, that shit doesn't fly. Like, the, the, cab, the Cavs are coming. The Bulls are coming. The Sixers, if the Sixers ever get their shit together. The Nets, if by the grace of God they ever get their shit together. Like, you got major competition. Not to, not to mention the reigning defending Eastern Conference champion, Boston Celtics, like you mentioned. So, there's too many teams gunning for them right now. There's too many teams gunning for them. And... I think they need to make some moves. I definitely need to think. I definitely think that they need to shore up this roster and get somebody else. They need somebody else for years. Now may be the time to pull the trigger. Need some last minute fantasy football advice? Then the boys at the Fade Route have you covered. Tune in every NFL Sunday to Red Light, Green Light, One, Two, Three with DNZ. DNI give you our top one, two, three fantasy starts or green light and fantasy sits or red light that's red light green light one two three every nfl sunday during the season you can find us on apple Podcasts, spotify and wherever you get the fade route that's red light green light one two three with dnz every nfl sunday during the season the choice is yours Swipe left or swipe right? All right, boys and girls, here's how it goes. We have a statement, and we either swipe left or swipe right. If you're online dating fans out there, you know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about. Swipe left or swipe right. Number one, Odell Beckham Jr., Joining the Dallas Cowboys. I'm swiping left on this. Like, I, you know, people are trying to upsell the shit out of this guy in fantasy. I mean, he, he tore his ACL. I mean, I really wasn't big on him last year anyway. And, you know, he's going to need the right system, the right scheme to be effective. I don't see why Dallas needs him. They got Tony Pollard running the ball. They got Zeke as Tony Pollard's backup at this point. And they got C.D. Lamb, Michael Gallup. What do they need Odell for? That stuff that he's talking about with, oh, Jerry Jones says, oh, man, the star on Odell's helmet, that would fit in nicely here. That's just all talk. I don't think anything's happening there. I have to swipe left as well from the standpoint that it's Jerry Jones doing Jerry Jones things. He's a carnival barker. He's just a snake oil salesman. It's what Jerry Jones does. He's a hype man. And he's, he's great. He's great at his job. He, he's, he's great at being a hype man. And he's the owner of the team. If he's not going to hype the team up, who is? Right? I don't think... I mean, they certainly could use him. If you look at, you know, they're 25th in the league in passing yards. They're 14th in the league in points for. That's not great. They're only 11th in the league in rushing yards, too. They're averaging 132 yards. Solid, but not great. This team is definitely built for rushing and defense. And you don't really say that often about recent vintage Dallas Cowboy teams. Would Odell Beckham open up the offense more? Yes. Coming back from ACL surgery, you don't know what you're going to get, especially since it was in February. So, 
I have to swipe left on this. And as a giant fan, I didn't, you know, did I like the way he maneuvered his way out? No. But at the same time, you have guys coming back to this organization now. Like, you have Landon Collins. You have former players, like, willing to be around the team now. There's definitely something to the idea that Gettleman and Reese and McAdoo and Shermer and Judge, like, they created such a bad atmosphere that... You know, team players are just thinking that this Shane and Dable tag team, this Shane and Dable <laughs> structure, like this power structure, this organizational structure, is a breath of fresh air to where guys actually want to be part of this organization again. So there's something to a reunion, but it's got to be at the right price. Now, the Giants and The Cowboys, you know, in terms of cap, Giants are right up against it. Cowboys probably aren't much better. So it makes you wonder, like, how the cap is going to play into things. And if it boils down to money, I don't know if either team is going to be in, you know, in the running for Beckham services. But we'll definitely see. But he would definitely be an upgrade for either the Giants or the Cowboys. Swipe left or swipe right number two. The Mets locking up Edwin Diaz as their closer for the next five years. Uh, I don't know, man. I guess I need this question in three years. Um, I feel like the Mets have some other things they need to take care of rather than locking this guy up. Um, I'm going to swipe left on this. I think there's some other housekeeping things they need to take care of. I think they made a jump the gun with Mr. Diaz over here. I'm going to swipe right. I think it's the (laughs) first domino. It's the first domino. Even if you get three good years out of five, that's pretty good. Like, you'll take that. Especially, you know, in the nature of... It's the nature of relief pitching. It's up, it's down, it's up, it's down. And that is kind of where Edwin Diaz has been. 279, 327. 196, 559, his first year as a Met. 175, 345, 131. So, if you get three out of five years where he has a sub-2 ERA and has 40 saves per year... I say it's pretty damn good. And you might end up, you might, it might end up being a bargain. Now, do the Mets need other things to sure, to sure up other things? Absolutely. Um, according to reports, Carrasco is getting his option picked up. Okay. So they at least have two starting pitchers. Bassett declined his option. Walker opted out. DeGrom opted out. We're going to see. I think Walker should come back. I really like what Walker brings to the team. Outside of that, you know, outside of his balky back causing an issue and him not starting, him missing a start. Uh, Bassett, it's got to be at the right price if they want to reunite with him. This guy, I can't believe Bassett opted out. What the balls on this man? Well, you know, he believes in himself. Like, we should, you know, we should all be as confident in ourselves as Chris Bassett is. Because, you know, Chris Bassett, prior to his last two starts, had a very good year. The problem is, those last two starts happened. So, that's the thing. They need, I'm not even sure if they need to prioritize getting Nimmo. You know, I like Nimmo a lot. But they do have Starling Marte. And Starling Marte can play center field on an everyday basis. Now, the Colorado Rockies are very high on Brandon Nimmo. And no pun, not, no pun intended with that. I mean, he's from Wyoming, which is only about a two-hour commute, right? 
So, is the lure of home something that the Mets can give Brandon Nimmo? Or is Brandon Nimmo enough of, you know, is he enough of a, a Met through and through that, that he'll stay? Like, I don't know the answers to those questions. But the pitching definitely is an issue. The bullpen leading up to Diaz needs to be addressed. The offense needs to be retooled. This is a big, big flashpoint for the New York Mets. But I think bringing in and keeping Edwin Diaz is going to be beneficial for this short-term run. And they're going to build out from here. They are, they're, they're not done. They're definitely going to make some noise as the hot stove really starts to pick up. Swipe left or swipe right. Number three, speaking of MLB hot stove, Shohei Otani playing for the Angels past the All-Star break this season. No way. Swiping left. And I know they came out today, but they came out a couple of days ago saying, oh, you know, he's going to be here for a long time. He's going to be, he's our guy. He's, you know, we're, we're expected to win with him. Yeah, that's why he signed just a one-year deal. <laughs> my man is, my man is going to be gone. It's going to be a Met, a Brave, a Yankee, who knows. We ain't going to be an angel after the All-Star break. <clears throat> I am swiping left as well. It is stupid of Penny Perry Manassian to not trade him now. Your value will not be higher. Well, you worry about injury because if he gets hurt, then you're really screwed. I mean, that's what you're really worrying about, you know. Right, but you can get hurt any time. It's a question of are you going to maximize your value, and the longer you wait the more you risk injury. He can get, you know, he can get hit by a line drive in spring training. <laughs> you know, he could tweak his hammy like trying to leg out a double. My leg, like that, my leg, my leg. He, yeah, he could, you know, he could pull up, he could pull up lame between first and second. Like, he could actually, he could finally tear that UCL. You know? He could be done for the... He can get Tommy John and be done for the year. Like, at any given point, injuries happen. The whole idea is to maximize the return on this guy. He is... If he is the generational Babe Ruth-like talent that we think he is, he would command at least five prospects or a combination of three prospects and two major league caliber players. Like he would he would get the haul because of how unique he is. You know, with all due respect to Christoph Porzingis, this guy is the real unicorn. Not him. Now, okay, you're not dealing Otani. This team needs a major overhaul. The Angels have been a disappointment for years. So, what I read into this is that, okay, we're not trading Otani. Fine. We're not going to trade Otani. I might listen on Trout. I might listen on Rendon. I'm not going to trade Otani, but I will trade some of these other guys and try and rework this roster. Because I look at <laughs> I look at the 40-man roster of just the pitchers alone. It's just like, oh God. It's awful. It's, it's absolutely terrible. And they started moving guys out, started moving guys back in. It's just not good. It's just not good at all. Like, you have Trout in the outfield. Joe Adele. Maybe Joe Adele will become something. He didn't look like much last year. You're really, like, hoping Mickey Moniak. I mean, you, you traded, you know, him for Syndergaard. You hope that he's something. He was a former number one overall draft pick. You hope something happens with that. 
Fletcher is a decent player. You really have nothing to speak of here. Like, the cupboard is bare. So, you really should, if you are Manassian, if you're really adamant about at least waiting till the deadline, you really should consider moving on from Rendon and moving on from Trout. You're going to have to eat money, but that's okay. Or, you know, like, maybe, like, if you were Manassian, and whoever's running the Yankees, because it's not cash money, it's not under contract. If you were Perry Manassian, and whoever's running the Yankees calls you and said, okay, I'll give you a one-for-one swap, Giancarlo Stanton for Mike Trout, would you do that? No. 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 Broken, no. two broken down injuries. I don't want, field. yeah, I'm not taking garbage. <laughs> He's garbage. He's but you're garbage. given garbage. But you're given garbage, Yeah, too. but there's the difference is Trout, Trout's got suitors. Stanton has no suitors. There's nobody in the league that wants Mike Stanton on their team, John Carlos Stanton on their team. There's probably 20 teams that will still want Mike Trout, despite all his injuries. He value. There's no Stanton has no value. In my eyes, in my eyes, Mike Mike Trout does just as much. But he's never on the field. He's due for his annual calf injury. <laughs> <laughs> he can predict the weather with his cat. So, I think that, you know, we're definitely selling a, a bag, of, a bill of goods here on Mike Trout. He's definitely not who he was, and I think he's entering that downside of his career. Uh, and it, it's sad to say, as a Met fan, and I really don't want to give this guy credit, but, like, Bryce Harper has moved ahead of him. Bryce Harper has, like, in terms of the winning, in terms of being the face of the league. Like, oh, Otani's moved moved past Trout. His own teammate moved past Trout. <laughs> like these guys are, they're making that move. And I don't know if, if I'm the Angels, like I gotta blow this up because it's not working. Just adding, adding, adding. And then dumping, dumping, dumping while keeping the same guys, like the same high-profile guys, doesn't work. Like we've seen with the Yankees, right? Adding around these guys hasn't worked. So move on and try something new. Are you in need of air care maintenance or service? I have the company for you. Air Care Technicians. They service the Westchester and Northern Bronx area and can help you with all your heating and cooling maintenance and service needs. Just give them a call at 914-315-1547. Again, that's 914-315-1547. Or shoot them an email at aircaretechnicians at gmail.com. These guys are the real deal as they are veteran owned, licensed, and insured. Make sure to tell them that DNZ sent you. The Fade Store presents the alleged superstar of the week award. All right, boys and girls, you know what time it is. It's time for the alleged superstar of the week. Here's how it goes. We put up a poll on our Twitter page at Fade Route DNZ, and you vote, and you vote, and you vote, and you vote. And the winner of that vote gets the coveted ass trophy and a shout out on this here podcast. And do you know who took home the coveted ass trophy last week? Was the no Daniel Snyder, that guy. Yeah, that one was kind of low-hanging fruit. <laughs> but that was last week. This is this week. Who are your nominees for the alleged superstar of the week, D? So the first one I got is Jim Ursay firing good old Frank Wright and hiring Jeff Saturday, a man with no coaching experience at all. What kind of message does that send to your team? Jim Ursay, you are my alleged superstar of the week. And number two! Aaron Rodgers, goat my ass. 
three interceptions, <laughs> two of them in the red zone against the Lions, which are the worst defensive team in the league. The Lions gave up a score on their bye week, man. Come on, Aaron. Aaron Rodgers, you are my alleged superstar of the week. And last but not least, Josh Allen. Mr. I'm the next big thing. Mr. MVP, kiss that goodbye. 205 yards and two interceptions against the Jets. The J-E-T-S, New York Jets. They weren't even wearing their black stealth uniforms this weekend. Josh Allen, you are my alleged superstar of the week. Z, what do you got? Good choices. All very good choices. Uh, well, got to start with Jerry Jones. Jerry Jones, Mr. Odell Beckham Jr. will look great in the Cowboys uniform. Mr. I am the law. Oh, God. Like, are you kidding me? Like, dude, shut up. Shut up, you carnival barker. Like, this is all about you. This is all about you. And frankly, it needs to not be about you, Jerry. It needs to be about the team. And the team's doing all right. The team is doing okay. I don't know if they necessarily need Odell Beckham, but you're just going to chase those stars as you're wont to do. Jerry Jones, you are my alleged superstar of the week. The San Diego Padres. We're discussing playing Fernando Tatis at multiple positions. (laughs) Multiple positions? How about you get him on the field? What plan do you want? Like, I, I don't understand this. I, I really don't. Because this guy ain't playing anytime soon. He's not. Did, did we miss something? Did, did they rescind the suspension? Did he not have surgery? Like, I, I'm confused. I, I'm really, truly confused as to this. You ain't, you're not getting anything on this. You're not getting anything out of this. Anytime soon. San Diego. What the fuck? <laughs> San Diego Padres, you are my alleged superstar of the week. And last but not least, Angels GM Perry Manassian. For not being willing to deal your best player to reinvest in your shit ass team. The Angels are going nowhere. They're going nowhere fast with him. And they're going to go nowhere fast without him. So maximize what you're going to get for him because the opportunity is narrowing by the second. The window is closing by the second. And the longer you wait, the less you're going to get. And the longer you wait, the greater the chances for injury. But no, we're going, he's our guy. Well, I hope you're right. I hope you're right, because it's a very, very risky move. Perry Manassian, you are my alleged superstar of the week. Those are our picks. Head over to the Twitter page at DNZ. The poll goes live after the show. And for our nominees. <laughs> Just do better, boys. Just do better. Looking to break into broadcast media, web development, social media marketing, or filmmaking? Then CSB is the program for you. From day one, you'll be trained hands-on by industry pros like friend of the show Rob Adams, whose goal is to get you trained and get you working in months, not years. CSB offers 8- and 16-week programs in small class sizes designed to give you the personalized attention you need. If you can make it in person, there are five East Coast locations. If you can't, they offer virtual classes too. How great is that? And once you graduate, you become part of the alumni network that gets you to the front of the line. Trust me, I'm going to love myself. Go to GoCSB.com today, request more info, set up a studio tour, and who knows, you may very well be on your way to a career in broadcast media. That's GoCSB.com and tell them Z sent you. GoCSB.com.
Let's run the option and give you our picks for the week. It is the option for week 10. Week 10 already in the National Football League. And if you haven't yet, get in on our CBS Pick'em. Go to our Instagram page at Fate Route Podcast. Go to the link in bio. Sign up today. Take us on and see what you can do. Foxy's in the lead by one game. Ready, willing, and Dable. The lovely Rita Sanchez from Austin AYSO. She is in second place right now. And we're we're nipping on their heels. Can you guys hold on? We're going to find out. Your 8-15 Thursday night prime game. Trash. What a doozy. <laughs> what a doozy. <laughs> the division leading. Car, uh, division leading Atlanta Falcons at 4-5. and five Go into Carolina to take on the 2-7 and seven Carolina Panthers who are sticking with P.J. Walker. Falcons. Ah! Oh! Oh my! I mean, I got burned by the Panthers last time, so I, I don't think that I, I don't think they have a chance in hell. Falcons take this one pretty easily. Do we see Baker Mayfield on the field this weekend? No. <laughs> we Maybe might be eating a hot dog. I don't know. Oh, they pull. Well, if Sanchez, well, if they should put that on Fox then and have Sanchez do the game because they can analyze how he puts the mustard on. <laughs> Sunday morning, 9 30 a.m. Here we go again. Not London this time. Germany. The German. The six and three Seahawks go into Germany. To take on their four and five Tampa Bay Buccaneers. What are we doing? What the what hell are, is this? What are we doing? What is this? Why? I'm uh, taking the Bucks. I'm gonna take the Seahawks. I think they're do. I think they're doing well. Walker's gonna have a game. That defense plays, man. And Bucks are just they're not what they used to be. That is for damn sure. They are, they're they're a tough watch these days. We're into the one o'clock games now on Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. The seven and one Vikings go into Orchard Park to take on the six and two Buffalo Bills. I'm going with the Vikings. Uh, it's unclear if Josh Allen is going to play. His he hurt his UCL, his elbow. Um, I'm starting to doubt. Uh, his future um, for the rest of the season. I'm going to take the Vikings as well. I think that they they can put up enough of a fight, and it's 1 p.m. Kirk Cousins, so that guy's invincible. The 2-6 and six Lions coming off of their victory against the Packers, going to Soldier Field to take on the 3-6 and six Chicago Bears. I believe in the Bears, man. I believe in the Bears. Don't worry with Justin Field and the Bears. I'm going to take the Bears as well, but it is going to be closer than we think it's going to be. You know, I keep saying that, but the Lions, the Lions play hard. They play tough. And it wouldn't surprise me if they actually have the lead and Justin Fields comes back and takes it from them. So I'm going with the Bears, but only by a point or two. The three and six Jacksonville Jaguars go into Arrowhead to take on the six and two Chiefs. Yeah, so I'm going to I'm gonna go with the Chiefs on this one. How about them Chiefs? The Jags are the Jags are game. They're game. They're just not talented enough to ride with the Chiefs. The three and five Browns. Let's go into Miami to take on the six and three Dolphins. I'm going with Miami. Pretty safe bet. Pretty safe bet. That new look 
running back tandem of the old San Francisco 49ers running backs are going to run the ball down the Browns' throat. The 1-6-1 and one Texans go into MetLife to take on the 6-2 and two New York football Giants. Giants better win. Yeah, that's for sure. That is for sure. And I think they're gonna. I think they're gonna. Saquon will have a big day. The Texans, they're not really loaded for bear. Though the one guy that scares me is Damian Pierce because the Yankee, the Yankees, the Giants can't stop the run all of a sudden. So we'll see what they're made of. But I think the Giants will have enough to win. Continuing on, I can't. And the three and six New Orleans Saints at the two and six Pittsburgh Steelers. Like this is that's a ugh, that's a dog game if I ever heard one. Ugh. Yeah, I got to go with the Saints too, but I have no confidence in that pick, especially if Andrew Dalton is still going to be starting. You're going to have Andrew Dalton against Kenny Pickett. He see his. You see his hairdo, and he doesn't shave anymore. He totally looks like Andrew Dalton, man. <laughs> oh <my. laughs> he looks great. Love oh, it. my God. It's like he let himself go. He really just let himself go. The 3-5 and five Broncos at the 5-3 and three Tennessee Titans. Oh, man. Mm. Mm, King Henry, Titans. This is hard. Right? Because as bad as Russ is playing, they actually have a quarterback. Like, Malik Willis is going to have to throw the ball more than 10 fucking times. Because that defense, regardless of what's going on in Denver, that defense will still play. So, I'm going to go out on a limb and I'm going to take the Broncos. I have no faith in this one either. But I'm going to ride with this. Broncos country. Let's ride. We're into the 4 o'clock hour. Oh, God. The 3-5-1 and one Indianapolis Colts. Sands, Frank Reich, and hello, Jeff Saturday. Go into Las Vegas to take on the 2-6 and six Raiders. The Raiders better win. They better win. God, I should pick a tie. I have no faith in this one either. Like, the, oh, God. Uh, this is t- this one is really bad. Do I take Ellinger and Jeff Saturday in his professional coaching debut, or do I take Josh McDaniels circling the drain? They just cut Jonathan Abram. He just got picked up by the Packers on waivers. We'll get to them in a second. Ugh. I'll go with the Raiders. I'll ho- I'll hold my nose and go with. The Raiders. No confidence in that one either. Three no confidence picks in a row. That's what you sign up for on this show. The 425 game. The 6 and 2 Cowboys going to Lambeau to take on the 3 and 6 Green Bay Packers. Dallas. How about them Cowboys? How about them Cowboys? The Packers are going to go 3 and 7. Do you start wondering about LaFleur? You start wondering about his job security at Wondering this point. about LaFleur for four years now. <laughs> <laughs> but does it become real? It should have it should have been real three years ago. <laughs> the three and six Arizona Cardinals at the three and five Rams, but Matthew Stafford is in the concussion protocol. Love it. Uh 49ers. I'm going with the cards. I think that the cards, they better win. I mean, you're going against the, against the immortal John Wolford, right? So, uh, you got to take the cards over the Rams at this point in time. Wait, Even if it's in so far. Wait a minute, what are you talking about? Aren't, isn't the Chargers playing the 49ers? The Chargers are playing the Niners, but the Cardinals are playing the Rams. Oh, I thought I got the wrong. I got the wrong game. I'm going with the Cardinals. I don't know why I said 49ers. We were hoping for that. We would just skip over that one. We just we just skipped over the Cardinals and the Rams because like I don't want to watch that shit. 
I don't want to watch that. Neither do you. I even totally misheard you. Yeah, I'm thinking the Cardinals. Oh, you got, yeah, no. First week on Hard Knocks. They got to come through. God. Got to, got to, got to. <laughs> You're like, he's just totally skipping over this game. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, okay, on the next one. That's fine by me. Because I really don't want to talk about this game either. Oh, That's man. perfect. Your Sunday you know, night special. You know, the whole Los Angeles thing on my sheet. You yes. The Chargers and the Rams, man. Yes. Yes. And the other LA team. Here we go. Your Sunday night special. The five and three Chargers go into Santa Clara to take on the 49ers. I love, how, I love how it was like cards. You got the cards of the Rams. I'm taking the 49ers. Well, I didn't see that one coming. <laughs> <laughs> They're cashing it. All righty then. Things. Nobody's got that. <laughs> Try to beat his pick this week. <laughs> the 49ers are going to they're going to beat the Chargers, then they're going to fly down to Phoenix and beat the Cardinals. <laughs> I didn't, oh, okay. I didn't realize you could do a run in in football. Oh, man. That's great. <laughs> so, no. my God, Kyle chair Shan- shot. Chair <laughs> shot. <laughs> Kyle Shanahan's got a chair. What the hell is going oh, on? Oh, man. All right. I'm taking the 49ers. Same here. I'm going to take the Niners, too. And I, I, if I'm Brandon Staley, I'm worried about my job. I really am. Because I started out with a lot Herbert, of problems. Herbert regressed, man. He did. But I, I still, I really have a feeling that he's hurt. I really yeah. think that he's, he's playing yeah. through something right now. Yeah. If your backup was Chase Daniels, wouldn't, wouldn't you play through it? So, I don't know. I have a feeling that he's done. McDaniels is done. Uh, Kingsbury's done. There are a lot of guys. Lafleur might be done. Lafleur. Yeah. So there, there are a lot of guys who might be on very thin ice right now and teams are going to start thinking about it because they're already in week 10 so why not your Monday Night Delight speaking of a guy that may be on thin ice Ron Rivera leading the Washington Commanders at 4-5 and five into Philly to take on the 8-0 and o Philadelphia Eagles commies I'm taking the Eagles though <laughs> fly Eagles fly 9-0 and o, and yeah, it's not even going to be close. Teams on a bye this week. It's a division the, game. It's a division game. It's, the, it's a division game, but, you know, the commanders aren't that great. You know, they're, you have Gibson, you have McLaurin. Do you trust? Do you really trust Taylor Heineke? I don't. Against that defense with Bradbury and Slay? No, not even close. Teams on a bye. The Ravens, Bengals, Pats, and Jets. Adjust your fantasy rosters accordingly. This has been the Fade Route with DNZ. Thanks for tuning in tonight. Catch our podcast on Wednesday nights on Anchor, Spotify, iHeartRadio, wherever you listen to your podcast. Till next time, stay faded, everyone. Time for us to run the go raffle. We'll talk to you next week. want to get on the action we want to hear from you hit us up fade route mail at gmail.com slide in our dms on ig at fade route podcast drop us a dm on twitter at fade route dnz comment on our youtube channel the fade route with dnz questions comments picks segment suggestions you name it we want to hear from you get at us in crowd Thanks for listening to this episode of our podcast. If you like what you heard and want to hear more, be sure to like and subscribe on your favorite podcast platform. Rate us five stars. Leave us a review. Turn on subscription notifications and tell your friends. Spread the word. Spread it wide.